first one is uh, Johnny and uh, Therese Bourg from uh, the Libraire. Johnny Bourg is head chef of the Three Star Restaurant in Zwolle, and he runs it together with his wife, Therese. She's also a master of wine, if I'm uh, not mistaken, so welcome both of you. Also in our chairs, we already met him yesterday during the Food Meat Science, Jan Jakob uh, Burma, one of the most, let's say, cosmopolitan chefs, uh, born in Austria, he went to the hotel school in the Netherlands. Then he worked in Germany, England, Belgium, before becoming the head chef at the Michelin restaurant, uh, the Nederlanden in um, Vreeland. We would also like to welcome in our panel from the Lindenhof, Sunil Bahadur. Born in uh, Suriname, Suriname, he was eight years old when he moved to the Netherlands. Totally one of us. In 1995, he was ready for the next step and he started the restaurant, the Lindhof. So he became the first SVH master chef uh, with uh, Surinamese background in the Netherlands and in Belgium. It's a pleasure having you here. Also welcome Marlene Brouwer from uh, De Love. Very young talent, Marlene Brouwer. She worked in the kitchens of start restaurants and at home and abroad before. Conquering Drenthe, ladies and gentlemen. It was named Restaurant of the Year in 2019, and we also saw her in the documentary The Nieuwe Garde. And last but not least, uh, Joël Broekaar, Dutch culinary journalist. It's also nice to have some journalists in our panel to have some other points of view for uh, Vrij Nederland and restaurant critic for uh, NRC. He travels around the world, he dines in the most chic star-rated restaurants, um, and I know that fishing for salmon is also one of his passions. So really curious to find out uh, all the, the facts, the trends, everything that is going on in the Dutch gastronomy, and there are a lot of things going on in uh, Dutch gastronomy. We already discussed some yesterday and uh, this morning, but maybe start with, uh, with you, um, Johnny and Therese, how would you Definitely describe Dutch gastronomy. Oh, I thought that you did it. No, it's yes, good. Yeah, how do you describe Dutch gastronomy? Uh, when, when I started uh, uh, more than 30 years ago uh, as, a, as a chef, um, the Dutch gastronomy was French. Everything they did was French. And I think in those more than 30 years, it uh, it, how do you how do you say that? It, it, um, it evolved. It evolved uh, to to uh, a sort of a multi-culty gastronomy and uh, yeah, and very serious now and very Dutch now. But if you say very Dutch, is there something typically you could? Yeah. Uh, Except from the pinda, nice. pinda Typi sauce. <laughs> typically Dutch. Uh, no, then we have to. Uh, to sell uh, some th things we don't do now. Uh, mm -hmm. What I th think with typically Dutch is uh, that we have very nice products and uh, uh, that we know now as chefs that we don't have to buy anything from other countries. We have to, we, the most of the things we have ourselves. Yeah, keep it local, Therese, is, is that correct? Could you confirm that? Uh, yes, uh, sure. Uh, I think uh, Johnny is doing that for 30 years. Uh, a lot of local products. We have a great supplies in our area, I think in, in whole Holland. So I think the Dutch cuisine, it's, it's really good that it's get more attention and what we have here in Holland is so beautiful. And I think all the chefs here in Holland work with a lot of local products and I think that is that's really good. It's really nice. Jan Jacob, well, we already met yesterday. You surprised everyone uh, with uh, the great uh, meat dishes. Is that how you would describe Dutch cuisine? How would you describe it? Actually, I, I think we don't have a really Dutch cuisine because we are uh, traveling people. We are traveling around the world. We take everywhere uh, some, some products, ingredients, some styles, uh, influences. So uh, for me, there is a local thing. Of course, uh, Dutch Holland is, is part of 60% of the North Sea, so fish is one of them, and the other thing is tomatoes, so we bring them out, and a lot of uh, other stuff, but I think vegetables, uh, but more and more, uh, we have like the Nordic Scandinavian uh, cuisine, we have the same 
influences here, and we have more respect of that. I think the bio, uh, the bio industry is is more down, and now the the ingredients about local small suppliers is getting up. And I think our chefs in total in Holland, they support it more and more. So the image is more natural. Mm -hmm. Yes, then uh, I'm looking at you, of course, uh, Sunil. Maybe from another point of view, because you are bringing a lot of your influences to Dutch cuisine, um, do you think that the colonial history of uh, the Netherlands is also reflected yeah. in... As you see, I am not very really Dutch, but I grew up in the Netherlands, and uh, so I, I get two cultures, you know, at home cooking for mama, from uh, the Indian, the Suriname kitchen, and also the Dutch people, because I grew up also with andaivi and, and uh, uh, cauliflower and that kind of things. But that's also soul food for me, you know, because when I cook for my children, I ask what you want. You want to go to the McDonald's or you want that I make for you cauliflowers with bechamel sauce and, and, and uh, meatballs? No, we want meatballs with uh, cauliflower. and that. I gonna take. I say that's a Dutch cuisine. It's a local product we use, but I make a different kind of taste with it. You know, uh, in India they have aloo gobi. Aloo is the potato, and gobi is cauliflower. And we make dishes with it. And I think we are 24 hours around the world now. We must have respect for the products we have in the Netherlands. And we have it also because we have many things in the Netherlands, asparagus. But I think all the chefs here and around the Netherlands, they make different kind of dishes with it. And uh, yeah, and that's what I do also. And I make different kind of, because if you know the, the uh, century ago, the Netherlands and uh, go to the Indonesia and everything and they take potatoes to the Netherlands, mm -hmm. that kind of things. And that's why I think we use many flavors from the Netherlands to use it in the Dutch cuisine, for me. But I think the most chef also, and that's my uh, opinions of, about Dutch cuisine. So also keep it local, but you're bringing together uh, the best of both uh, yes. worlds. So maybe let's... Um Hand over to Marlene. Marlene, and your restaurant is in a, in a smaller city uh, village. <laughs> 300 I've people. I've been told, <laughs> yes. So, um, do you notice any difference? Do you, do you see any trends there? In How our, many people in your village? In, in, our, in our village, are there, there, there are five streets and 300 uh, people. So, it's not... <laughs> Uh, well, uh, in Drenthe, where I'm from, um, it's 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 the same as in the whole of the Netherlands. We we use all the all types of vegetables. Normally, we use it from our own garden. So uh, I think that's a trend also because everybody would like to have something from the garden, um, and it's 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 something well regional. And I don't I don't know. It's not really a trend, or I think it's just something you, you have to do. And how would you describe the cuisine you are bringing? Is it really Dutch for you? Yeah, we have a really Dutch cuisine, but um, we like some, like, we like Japanese uh, styles. So we, look, we, 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 we have a lot of lime, lemon, it's very fresh. Uh, and everything is uh, normally, we, we like the, the main product on the, on the plate is from the region uh, or it's from Holland. Okay. So, Joel, <laughs> you as a real culinary journalist, ever after having heard all this and seen all the other uh, panelists, so how would you describe or what is for you then really the Dutch cuisine? Um, well, Holland doesn't have a deeply rooted gastronomic tradition like Belgium or France has. Um, so I guess what defines our cuisine at this moment is, I think internationally for the last 10 years, locality has been the magic word, has been the, 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 the focal point. Um, I think that's something that 
I think Yoni has been doing that for 30 years, so it's not a new thing, but maybe for the general public and for the diners, they are more susceptible to it. They are more open to it because since the whole Nordic influence locality has become something um, uh, bon ton. Um, so I guess that's a big part of it. Um, something else, because we don't have this deeply rooted culinary tradition, we are also more flexible in adopting new styles and just not, we don't have the, the bagage, the, 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 mm -hmm. the luggage, the, the, uh, the luggage, yeah, yeah. Like, so for instance, what's very interesting to see is, and I think Sunil is absolute standard bearer for this um, uh, uh, stroming, um, what's the English word for it? Um, stroming, just movement, movement. thanks. Um, is that we, could, we have like, these colonial traditions we have very big um, areas in, in The Hague. You have a huge uh, Indonesian population and also, of course, a lot of people from Suriname. And it's slowly starting to um, get through to the highest culinary levels. And you see this fusion, uh, which is rooted in our tradition. I think this could, could define Dutch culinary, um, the Dutch gastronomy in the future, maybe, as opposed to all these other countries that also are focused on locality. Um, and as a third thing on a whole, I think we've seen that, I think which is, what is very important is that last year Michelin awarded a, a star to the New Winkle. And this means that in, if we just take Benelux, like the Low Countries as a bigger region, which is heavily influenced by this tradition of the Belgian and the Flanders and the, the French tradition, there, um, Old-fashioned, maybe, or traditional, if I'm more friendly in, uh, in my choice of words. Um, and they, they are slowly starting to catch on with the new movement, with the new influences, because the new Winkle is very, very vegetable-minded. They do a lot of fermentation, things like that, and they're finally starting to catch on. So the old guard is, so this, this huge tanker is slowly starting to move a little bit here in the, in the, in the wider region. Johnny, you totally agree. I don't know if the audience uh, was aware, but you said, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you mentioned it already for the first question. You said, we don't have a very long tradition, but we managed to find our own way. What changes have you seen? I think the, the nicest thing I've seen is when I went uh, 25 years, 30 years uh, back to Belgium and France, then you had... Um, uh, mid-class restaurants, they were really, really good. In Holland, the mid-class restaurant was always the same. Schnitzel, Graakbal, uh, was not good. And what's, what's going on now is that uh, we're growing up, and what you see is that the mid-class restaurants, they, they are also very good. And that's what I like very much. So that's an evolution you see now. Uh, Sunil, do you also... You, you agree? Do you also see it? Is that the trend? Yes, for when we started, uh, I work in Belgium and I see the different kind of uh, flavors in the Netherlands and the Belgium. And after that, I come to the Netherlands. I think we have made a revolution in Holland, in the Netherlands. Because in the year of 1980, we have like this teller, plates and little bit of food. And there was the Nouvelle Cuisine. And now we have food. We have real food, real flavors on the, te uh, on the table. Because I see it because many people from the Belgium and the French come to the Netherlands and also from another country like Italy and Spain. And then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the cuisine from the, the Dutch cuisine now, the Netherlands, is much better than 25 years ago. And, and some chefs had bring it and we are doing our best to bring it and i hope in the future the another boys who is now bring the netherlands cuisine high level so that's the direction you think it's it's yes. going yes <laughs> Jan. <laughs> Jacob, Jan. You, you are absolutely <laughs> you were dreaming right. you were listening I, I, I think the most important is we uh, for the last 10 years we do we hadn't before uh, actually not an identity in the cuisine. So we, we look at the old style of France and now uh, we are following our own uh, roots. 
you know, in the Dutch. And I think the respect to take um, behind your own restaurant, your, your village, your, your, your province or something like that, it, it's more and more normal, you know, and we have it. We already have the ingredients. It's amazing that we, ha that we see eh, the respect uh, for fish, the respect for our uh, suppliers, uh, but also the suppliers understanding more and more that what chefs wants on, uh, to have in the restaurant. So there is more connecting between everybody and then exactly the image, you know, it's not only Michelin, it's the best chef, it's the world best 50. They bring also a big face to the Dutch gastronomy. And I think it's really important, you know, uh, the most of the European chefs, they say Holland is a really creative um, minded, open-minded and, and very interesting um, uh, cuisine, you know, and I think that that phase we need, you know, we had a long time I was starting, we look, everybody was looking to Spain, yeah, we had uh, Ferran Adrian, uh, a lot of uh, Martin Beres taking, and I was always surprised about, I remember me, it was in his first year that uh, Ferran Adrian was open, it had one star because the old owner was um, was a man who was later opening a two-star restaurant in, um, in Barcelona. And I was completely, fuck, what is happening here? You know, and I think Dutch chefs, they are fucking creative because they have the eyes open. They're traveling a lot. Also the guests, they're traveling a lot. So we, we took from everywhere the things, but we have the respect for our own region. I think uh, Joel can, can imagine this yeah, because he opened in a program already local things and the, the products and uh, the image of Holland. And I think we, had, we need this phase. So chefs are actually the best motivation uh, people for this to make it bigger than it, what it is on the moment. And what Sunil says, in, in 10 years, you will see the Dutch cuisine is it's, it's, it's more than ever before. But um, if you say it like that, then it's not the cuisine that is changing, but the chefs that are changing it. Yeah, but actually so also the cuisine is changing because uh, there is a new time coming. Mm -hmm. uh, you are working things... on a lot of new projects also. Okay, we'll share that later on. Uh, Therese, you want to add something? No, You're only, eager to... I only want to say is that I think it's not only the cuisines but only the, and the chefs, but I think also the guests are really changing here in Holland also. But a lot of people, I think what we do good in Holland is that we create um, a lot of different restaurants, concepts. Uh, people, uh, Dutch people, like to go out, like to have uh, good food. Uh, they want to have a fair food with a good price. And I think that is what, um, what Holland is really doing good. If you look at Joris, he created different restaurants with a different concept. We are also doing it. And I think the people like that. And when we see in our restaurant in Libraia, when people come, um, a lot of people from outside, they say, wow, this Holland, and Holland is good, and what they're creating, and with, with the products, that I think is really, really a good sign, and mm -hmm. also for the future. And I hope, the same what you say, is that our next generation will continue it. Must continue. Must. It's important, yes. But we must say it to them, eh? No, actually, but we had before also big chefs in Holland, eh? a completely different way. And now on the moment, you see more and more that, that you, you open your telephone and you connect everywhere in the world. So everything that you want to order, doesn't matter, by internet, it, it's more open. And that means that the respect for our local things is more important than ever before. Because you cannot lie about the freshment of that. Why we order in, in Spain the fish or in, 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 in Zambia or uh, South Africa when we have the fish here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and we have to use what we have. We have to respect for it, but we need uh, not only chefs but also suppliers, constantly and more quality of that. Okay, that's also a good one. Eh? You're also um, talking about the suppliers. So, uh, Jakob Jan, I know you are working on a lot of projects. Could you maybe just reveal something already uh, about those projects with us? No, actually, I like to do, uh, after uh, 28 years, it was enough for me, but also because of uh, a lot of new um, things that was coming. Um, so the rest of my life I want to do more uh, crazy things, more traveling. I love traveling. 
um, because I have one other two, I want to visit all the countries in the world. And I, I'm halfway, so actually it's amazing. But that's another thing. I like to do some different um, types of restaurants. Also, uh, the, the industry of uh, vegetarian products is growing very fast on the moment. So I create three years back a big company in Soutemir, and now we're making a lot of um, easy products for all over the world. And it grows very fast on the moment because it's more open-minded. People want to go to restaurants, maybe not to eat every time in a, in a high-end restaurant, but also comfortable restaurant, but also at home. After Corona, you see people love to cook more than ever before. You see more platforms about recipes of chefs, you know? So it's changing a lot. And I think yeah, Corona brings us a lot but it is also very bad for us because we still have a new problem. We don't have the right people to find for our restaurants. And that's actually, on this moment, I think the most interesting thing to speak about it. So concepts with less people inside is really interesting. So I will open in Tokyo, um, end of this year, maybe January, because we don't know about the, um, how I say, the, the corona rules uh, already there. But it's a completely other concept. But they say more is less. So um, they don't want to have a lot of people. And we have to think different. And I think it's, it's, it's part of the new way to, uh, to cook because we have a lot of restaurants, also in Holland. I don't know exactly, but more than 45,000 restaurants, types of restaurants. So we don't have the people. So we have to think about a new way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we noticed this during our other debates, panel uh, discussions, all the chefs said, yeah, we are working less hours in a small team. But is it because you want it or because you're not finding the right people? It, it's both. I think one of them, it's the payment. It's, it's really hard to say it, but, you know, it's also the guest. Yeah, in Holland, is uh, when you go to a restaurant, we are cheap. When an uh, international guest says Holland is cheap, it's okay. The Dutch people say sometimes eh, too expensive for what you get. But I think Holland is really, really cheap on the moment in Europe. And um, that is one of them. I think also the government rules. You know, we pay for so many shit. Every year there are new rules or you pay more for everything. And uh, I think it, it's a combination between stuff and uh, the, the way that is changing a lot. People see more and more, and uh, there are more business that they can have less work and more money. So it, it's difficult to find. So, but it's not only in our business. Huh? It's, in, it's a lot of business. Marlene, if you hear this, what would you tell the younger generation? Uh, I think Therese already mentioned it. We really count on the younger generation for breaking the rules, for giving us the... She is the younger generation, so what would you share with us and what would you tell your, your colleagues, let's say? Well, I will tell my colleagues uh, to do their best and, and, and join our, uh, well, well, join the chef's life, join everything in what, um, what the, how do you call it? Hospitality, join the hospitality, sorry. Uh, join everything in the hospitality because it's, 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 it's going a little bit downwards at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we just need younger, young people. We need all the young people we can get. And it's, it's just, if you want something, you must go for it. So go for it. Mm -hmm. what, would, what could be the motivation sorry? for younger people? What could be the real motivation? Uh, the real motivation, well, you need to search the real motivation in yourself. Uh, big motivation is what's on this stage. Uh, mm -hmm. I was motivated uh, like uh, 15 years ago because I watched Top Chef uh, that was on the television and I saw these two people and I was, I was like, I really want to work there. And my mother said, well, then you need to apply for a job. And I, I applied and I I, w I was working uh, with Johnny and Therese, so if you want something, you just have to do it. Well, search for something, search on the internet, uh, go to all the, the restaurants you can find, go to everybody, eat everywhere, go all over the world and read his articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Joel, what could you add to that? What advice could you give the younger generation? I, I am not, I'm not adding anything to that. That's... What advice could you give to, to youngsters who want to start in the culinary world, gastronomy world? You mean to, to people that aspire becoming a chef or becoming a food writer? What do you... Yeah. Uh, Becoming a chef, maybe. Let's start with. Uh... Uh, well, what can I say? Well, I mean, what can I add to their advice? From my, I mean, I'm... but you see a lot, you read a lot, you well, write. Well, I a think. Lot. I th well, what I can say, I think there's there's possibilities. I think there's like, I think now there's more possibilities than ever because. Okay, of course we had this horrible 18 months, but um, the point that Therese was making earlier, I think the Dutch public is, is, that's the biggest change in the last 10, 15 years, that we have been a gastronomic backwards people. We've just eaten for function, it was functional. We needed to stuff ourselves and work, and we had a big breakfast and just, I mean, still, I still get people on Twitter just, just yesterday, like, Oh, this person goes out to dinner for for newspaper and he pays 260 euros and it's just a plate of food. This this is the mentality that we come from for in Holland. It's just a plate. It's like if you go to the Van Gogh Museum and you say, well, it's just a drawing, you know, like this, this is, and this is changing. There is now an audience for luxury, like like they these, these people are doing. But there's also an audience for this vegetable-minded fermentation thing that the new Winkels doing. There's an audience for bistros, there's an audience for just young people going out for a good pasta or pizza. It's, it's, it's accepted that going out for dinner and paying money for it is a, it's accepted more, more and more. So I guess my advice would just be, be creative and do it because if, if not now, then whenever. Are there any more trends you are seeing except from, from again, that Dutch identity that is coming? Do you think that, for example, also the social media influence a lot, how, how people see food, think about food? Yeah, probably, yes, of course. Instagram, will, I mean, like, photos of plates of food, they're literally everywhere, so that must be part of it, yes, of course. Therese, you, you say that especially young people yeah. are really influenced by... But doesn't that at a certain moment bring up the discussion that on social media we only see the good things and that... Yeah, the social yeah, media true. is setting the bar, the, the bar at it's the highest true. level. You always see the beautiful things on social media. Uh, no, but I think um, social media is is a, a good um, how say that a middle and uh, mm -hmm. good way or a good way you? to uh, to reach young people. Mm -hmm. um, when you see our children, they are 21 and 18. They also starting in the business, and what I see with them, it's the whole day, but all. Um, big chefs over the whole world. Our son, look, always checking dishes and curious how they do. So I think social media is really good to to get young people to make them uh, enthusiastic for our business, for our uh, for our job. I think it's so also an inspiring medium, not only by picture and setting the bar very high. Okay, I think this too different because. Um, of course, you see also a lot of people, girls and boys, who standing like this for the mirror. I don't know how they do it, but so you see a lot of beautiful pictures from people. But the other side, um, I think also us, when we are looking, uh, you see nice cocktails, nice dishes, you get inspired. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think this is also for us really important to do, inspire the young people. And then maybe let's turn the question. <laughs> Maybe let's turn the question. Do you have the impression that, I have the impression, that chefs are becoming more and more stars, celebrities, who also need to feed their social media? It's you a royal pain in the ass. Because now every day you have to think, oh, oh, I see something or I tasted something. Oh, I have to put it on social media. Yes. It's like a, it's, Is it it's, it's, more it's a pressure? Job. Do you experience it as more pressure? You need to be good in the kitchen, but also work on your social media. You're a brand. You need to inspire. It's a lot, no? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, but um, um, I don't think it has to be pressure. I think if you make this, uh, this uh, profession we have uh, more sexy than it is, mm -hmm. then young people 
yeah, they don't buy it and they, they are leaving the, the, the branch. So I think, uh, be honest, and if you see on, uh, on Instagram sometimes things and you go there, then it's totally diff different, and I think that's wrong. Uh, I've I just been doing that for years with their advertisement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. The Big Mac is never the same as on the picture, right? <laughs> so yeah, then you get disappointments. Actually, Jacob wants to add something. Actually, this is a big discussion. We have Shefty only on the internet and yeah. Facebook and, and Instagram. Are I think it's part of it. You know, uh, we have a lot of restaurants in the world, like Under in Norway. If they don't have a good image, they, if they don't have a good social media, you cannot find them because there are too many restaurants in the world. So it's part of um, a double thing, you know. It, it's very important, but in the end, when you are there, and, and that's true, then has to be the quality of what they propose that you have to see and to find. But I think for us, uh, because we were speaking about uh, the, the future Dutch. also, uh, this generation of top chefs in Holland has to be care about the young chefs, because the young chefs in Holland are coming, and we have so many young talents. After Corona, you see still that there are um, the, the energy from young chefs. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, and, and it, it's for us to take care of that and to give them the, the right positions, the right way to getting better than us, actually, to make a more image in the world. Because actually in Amsterdam they say we don't need any tourists anymore, but actually we need tourists. Because tourists brings more money in our country, makes, eh, maybe not in Amsterdam, bring them out in Holland. So it's, it's very important to make a good image. And restaurants actually are the only one. Because you see food traveling, yeah? Japan, Asia, it doesn't matter. Food is a way to travel. So we need that people. And I think it's, it's important that we have like Best Chef and all the, the guides, that, that face of it. You know, it's, it's the basic of an image. Everything starts at the school, you say, Marie? Well, everything starts at the school of the young people. I was taught uh, uh, on, uh, when I was in school, on the, on the chef's school. Um, so I was taught French cuisine and, well, a little bit of Dutch, but that was not in my time. Curriculum. Um, yeah. But, for, well, now I don't see enough students uh, to apply, I, there are not enough students to apply. There are just not enough on the on the chef's school because it's too old. They have too well the the what they learn, zeg maar. So what, what they're learning, the content of, well, of what they're learning. Well, it's too it's 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 from from the old ages. They need to fresh up mm -hmm. the school. That's yeah, everywhere. That's a question I asked in the other panel. Is it not also the role of education to change yes. and to prepare youngsters? So according to you, it is the content, also the people who are teaching. This is maybe a difficult subject, but... Yeah, well, the education, that's where, where it all starts. We do have so. the Kaspijkers Academy, eh? don't forget it. Yeah, well, the, well Kaspijkers Academy and the, the, the STAR uh, class in, Am in Amsterdam, but in Drenthe, there's not enough. And well, maybe Drenthe is not big enough. And well, we have a lot of tourists, and we have a lot of tourists in Drenthe. And you have but they don't give a fuck about my cuisine. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think you want to say something. It's, it's uh, about the social media you talked uh, before. I think the power of social media, you can feel it in the corona, in the COVID, because if you see that every chef did things on the social media to uh, to get to the guests you know to the, the to the people i did it also and i do it also because when when i started with the covid the food truck you 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 imagine that if you write something the people don't come and i put it on the social media there was uh, there was line from 2 hours to come to the food truck to eat something from me. And I think uh, every chef here can talk about it, that it's, yeah, social media, it's help. Mm -hmm. It helps to reach. To reach uh, people. A day before, you can see I'm open at 12 o'clock. Oh, three or I'm sold out, you know? Mm -hmm. 
they look on the social media. It is the, it's the power. Yes. <laughs> and also the young people now we started. Look, I think and, um, the young people are not, uh, not, are not changing, you know. Uh, the time is changing. And, and uh, Sonil, it, I think huh? it's time to open TikTok for you. TikTok, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but then um, I think when, when we started with... An, uh, when we were student and uh, I work at Souverains, Roger Souverains, they shout to me, we learn many things, but the time is changing. We don't, can do that. We can talk story about it to the young people now. You know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, we started with a chef and chef shouted and, and uh, we are crying and we can do that now in this time. The people are changing, they, have, they are faster, the young people are faster. We have enough talents in the Netherlands. We have many talents, and they are coming up. Because when you, when you want to uh, do things and uh, to, to go somewhere, then you must work hard, and they know it. But they do it on a different way. Mm -hmm. We must talk about it, we must coaching, and not more like we did it before, you know? But you see your role more as a mentor. You're not scared. No, I, I yes. We are a mentor. If you are a chef and uh, you, uh, you do so many years and uh, uh, you have so many years a restaurant, then you are a mentor on mm -hmm. time. And you must talk to the young people and coach them. You know, you must listen to them. I learned it last five years. And people talk to me, talk to the people, you know, you, 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 get, you will be better. And it's so. Well, Sunil, you just mentioned that during the pandemic you used social media to reach people. You also opened the spicy chef tracks. Is yes, it that, the, we what started. That? We uh, we started with a spicy chef truck, and I say it was a guerrilla action, you know. And I say how I can reach people because I was hacked with my in, uh, Instagram, and, and I was panicked. Like shit, how I must reach the people, you know? Because and, uh, to uh, to, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a few uh, some days we, uh, we're gonna open now and how I can reach and with social media we can reach okay. people like that kind of things if you start but if you if they know it they come but yeah somehow they must know it and it's no newspaper they're gonna write oh yeah go to Sunil and go to the food truck you can do it yourself and you know and yeah. in Holland they say in uh, uh, how would you say the 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 who say that the the best the best man zelf bent? Yeah, that you want to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why my The person. best chef yeah. indeed. Well, Johnny and Therese, if you could pick one thing that you would like to see changed now, today, tomorrow, but uh, on the short term, what would it be? What would you like to, to change, maybe yourself, or what is, according to you, still a challenge in Dutch gastronomy? And we're talking about Dutch gastronomy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we are changing a lot now. That's what the whole story is about, yes, I think. Yes. So I think that's okay. And what I uh, think that it, it, it must not go to be too quick changing. Okay. Because uh, the new generation, they are ready for it. And let them come. And okay. we have to help them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think uh, uh, the, the one thing I want to say about it changing um, it's the, the same what uh, Sonil said about uh, 30, 40 years ago, uh, the, the, the shouting and screaming in the kitchen. The same thing was, uh, you, you are not a good chef if you didn't have a turbot uh, line catched. And I think the thing that must change is that we sometimes do things with good farms, fish farms. It was a, how do you call it, taboo to mm -hmm. do it uh, 20 years ago, but I think there are a lot of uh, nice products now that uh, farmed, and I think we have yeah. to uh, listen to them because then you make the, the world a better place. Well, that's uh, nicely said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Therese, what would you yeah. see as a challenge? Um, yeah, maybe because I'm from the surface and we all talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's better. <laughs> but, hospitality. Um, hospitality and 
Yeah, I think maybe I like to say that that I of of course the chefs are really really important, but I noticed that guests also um, think it's important that the service is great, that the restaurant Absolutely. is nice, that people feel happy and welcome, and um, sometimes you hear things about a three star restaurant or two star maybe doesn't matter what kind of restaurant, and then they they have good food, really good food, but then the service wasn't good, so. You know, I think it's it must be all together, and uh, I, I think also that is something I really like to say is that of course the kitchen is must be the best, but also in the front the people, the hostess, the sommeliers. I think it's one, and then then you will be forever good. Mm -hmm. Like like in a real football team where everybody has his. Yeah, it's really a team, task. but we operate also yeah. for a long time as a team. And we notice in our staff that um, they like that we are a team uh, and that we do it together. And I think that will give also a lot of energy. The, the same thing, we come from a, from a, a time that uh, we had a white brigade and a black brigade. And they were always shouting against it. And uh, I uh, started 15 years ago, 20 years ago maybe, to wear a black uh, a black sh uh, uh, mm -hmm. chef's jacket, because I want to make clear that we are one team. Mm -hmm. that's okay, that's a good one. Also, Jacob Jan, could you, yeah, could you tell us what, according to you, should be changed in the short term, or what do you see as the biggest challenge before giving our audience the opportunity to to, to ask questions? I still have a lot, but I see that time is almost running out. So. I think when you are owner of a restaurant, you have to challenge a lot in your life. But the most extremely challenged now on the moment is to getting new people in our business. And I think that we, um, the older chefs in, in, in our uh, country, promote, but also um, help the young chef to get a better future for this business. In, um, in a lot of good times that they see what is happening and that they can reach it maybe with the government, but there has to be a lot of changing and you will see it because it's, mm -hmm. it's necessary. Yeah. And respect for, um, I think, more um, European ingredients. Yeah, that we don't take all the, the boats everywhere out of the world. It doesn't matter about only food, but it's, it's more than that. You know? I think that's a big challenge and for the rest, I can say only to all the journalists, make a lot of promotion for Holland, then we have a lot of guests, and it helps us a lot. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Sunil, yes. For changing, yes. I think we have too much head and uh, uh, not less belly in the Netherlands, because if you go to another country like San Sebastian or something, you go to the restaurant and you can eat everywhere, doesn't matter if they have a star or, or they have a Bib Gourmet or they are the best 50 or the, you know, you can eat everywhere. And that we must change in the Netherlands because if you go to the restaurant like a village where she lives or where he lives, doesn't matter. You must go to the restaurant and to eat because the quality is not so good always, you know. They make Slade Nisoise with. Like, like like tuna with uh, uh, can, that kind of things. I think they cook an uh, egg in uh, not eight minutes, but uh, 20 minutes, I think so, and it's blue. And the tomato, they, and, uh, yeah, th that kind of things, I think. And, 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 and cooking is not so, it's simple, you know? And if you don't can cook, do it simple. And mm -hmm. I think that must change in the Netherlands more. So and then maybe. not use the sauce demi glass from, an, uh, from, the, an, uh, you know, from the supermarket or that kind of things. Make it and yeah, we yeah. must make. Maybe that the fine dining is okay, but you mean that all restaurants yes, the should, should restaurant. catch up a little yes. uh, for the whole image of yes, uh, the Yes, for all people, yes. you know, but uh, not all, we, we don't can, yeah, I don't eat always every day in a Michelin star restaurant or the fine dining. I want to eat also in the local restaurant in the local and uh, you want to in, eat in good our everywhere. village. And if I go to a restaurant, you must eat good. All is it pommes frites or steak or steak tartare, but they must make it very well. Or you go to eat roti; it's also good. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> 
Marlene, what would you, what would you like to, to change yourself or, or see a challenge you face changed now? Except from... Well, I think they have said everything yes. for me. Um, well, I, 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 well, Kaspijks Academy, of course, is, is a very good uh, education, but I think it starts with the education of all the youngsters. So yes. change that a little bit. So uh, turn all the little uh, um, yeah, knopjes and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, nipples. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just squeeze it a little bit. Just change it a, change little, it a little bit. Change it a little bit and don't make it old fashioned. Just, just go with, with every, well, time. yes. So, Joel, what would you write about? Tell us, if you could summarize this, what is, according to you, the biggest challenge? What would you...? Um, I think it's a good thing that the audience is getting emancipated. They're not just, just taking everything for granted and, and, and they, they are critical about what they get served. But still, on the highest level, I would like to challenge the audience to trust the chef more, to just not, I mean, because still in Holland we are a bit on the money, so if we pay, then we want to decide and everything, but so just trust the chef. If you're allergic, if you're gonna die, sure. Tell them you don't, need, you don't wanna eat shellfish, otherwise shut up and just eat it because they know mm -hmm. best. That's what I would like to say. Well, that's also a very uh, nice me message. Thank you very much for the teamwork, the hospitality, uh, to mentor uh, the youngsters, of course. Also, think about education, more trusting the chefs, and then also, of course, working together to get that uh, good Dutch identity. We'll, uh, we'll keep that in mind. So, ladies and gentlemen, especially the audience physically here in uh, Amsterdam. Do you have any questions for this great team we had here on stage, who shared their passion, expertise, knowledge with us? Yes, we have one question. Thank you for your uh, time, guys. Um, I have a hundred questions, actually, uh, but I won't do that. I think we've scratched the surface today, but one question that um, I would like to hear is um, we had a great presentation yesterday about alternative protein. I just wanted to know what you're going to do going forward. Your question is if are they are going to use that kind of alternatives? So yeah, yesterday we talked about plant meats, yeah, yeah, alternatives, right. proteins. Are you already applying that in your restaurant? Uh, I, th I think um, we're doing a lot of that, that sort of things, and that's what I meant with uh, we have to look further, and of course uh, for plants also. But uh, I think when we get the chance to have good things in that way, uh, of course, I'm the first uh, who's going to do it. So depending on the suppliers also a little bit. Uh, Sunil, yes, do you agree? Yes, I agree also because uh, I think and, uh, we are and, uh, working with uh, more vegetables and uh, more and, uh, uh, proteins now in the Netherlands. And yeah, you can see uh, some restaurants in, also in Amsterdam, they are, and also the, the new Winkel, they are working with, I think it's coming, yes. Okay, but so yeah, maybe sometimes people want also meat and fish. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think uh, all the vegetables. Well, we we're talking about the new winkel. Uh, the the fermentation is coming. So if you have a, a, about proteins, just save the proteins, ferment, ferment everything, or try to ferment everything, and 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 try that. I think fermentation is is really upcoming, and well. Yesterday, uh, a restaurant was awarded with three Michelin stars, finally, after 18 years. And he's the, the, the main reason why fermentation is in the Netherlands, I think. So, well. Well, let that be maybe the new Dutch identity going for, uh, 
groundbreaking revolutions in gastronomy. I wish you all the best. First of all, of course, thank you for taking the time for being here. I'm sure that there are a lot of more things to share and to say. Maybe we can do that the next 15 minutes during uh, the coffee break. But for now, a big round of applause. Thank you very much. I'm sure that there are still a lot of more, more trends and facts to share, but we are going out for a short break. See you in 15 minutes. Thank you.